Hey, have you thought about driving an electric vehicle for Uber and Lyft? Uh, I did too. I thought I could save the planet and make more money at the same time. So I bought a 2018 Chevy Bolt. Find out what happens when you drive for Uber and Lyft with a Chevy Bolt. My name's Gabe Atzhoken and I have driven my Chevy Bolt for 32,000 miles and eight months. This is what happens when you buy a Chevy Bolt for rideshare. So I'm here with my uh, good buddy, Bob Stockstad, and we're gonna talk about driving my uh, 2018 Chevy Bolt for Uber and Lyft. So, uh, you know, uh, I wrote up some questions for you to ask me, Bob, because uh, a lot of my passengers, um, they basically ask these questions. So I thought it'd be a good format just to do the video like that. So we're gonna we're gonna go for a ride in my in my bolt. Have you driven in my car before? Uh, been a long time, but yes, I think so. Yeah, it's really great for uh, for doing this kind of work. I don't know why people have trouble with that seatbelt. Uh, <laughs> so, all right, but all what right. is the Chevy Bolt uh, sitting in here? Yeah, you know that's a good question because a lot of people. Uh, don't know the difference between a Chevy Bolt with a B like Bravo and a Volt with a V like Victor, right? The Chevy Volt is uh, Chevy's plug-in hybrid. This is the Chevy Bolt and it's Chevrolet's uh, first long range electric vehicle. It's pure electric. It's got electric motors. It doesn't burn any gasoline at all. In fact, I haven't uh, filled up a car at a gas station other than a rental car uh, since uh, last year. You said long range. What's long range? This car will go 238 miles. That's the EPA rated range. Okay, on the right here. That's the EPA rated range, and um, but you can milk it. You know, you can you can you know if you're just if it's just flat and the weather's good, um, you can get as much as uh, 300 miles or even more. Like the record on one of these is like 400 miles uh, uh, from from a single charge. A single charge. Where do you get that single charge? Are there lots of places where you can charge it besides home? There are. Uh, I mean, here in Northern California, it's it's very EV friendly, right? So there's plenty of uh, of charging stations. They're they're all over the place. But most of the public charging stations are what are called a level two charging station. And I guess you should talk about the difference between level one, level two, and level three uh, chargers. Level one is what you get with the car. It plugs into like a 120 volt outlet, just wherever. And you can get, um, and it charges very slowly because this battery is so large, it's 60 kilowatt hours. It takes, uh, it could take two or three days to charge from uh, fully depleted. The level two charge station is what you mostly see. It has one of those J1772 charging handles. It looks like a, like kind of like, like a pistol a grip. Pump. Yeah, it looks like a gas pump thing. And you plug that into the side of the, into the charge port. Um, and uh, that you can charge the car in about 10 hours from fully depleted. And then there's the level three and that's a fast charge. And that charges the vehicle so quickly that the computer system in the car actually slows down the rate of charge so it doesn't overheat the battery and cause a fire. And those will charge the car to 80% in about 40 minutes. It's time for a cup of coffee. Yeah, yeah. Do you know uh, there's a Japanese standard for fast charge that's called Chademo, and that's actually an, uh, like a contraction of the Japanese word for uh, charge the car in the time it takes to drink a cup of tea. Yeah. Was it a big investment to, to get this? What did, it, what did it cost you? Yeah, I think the, the MSRP is for the base model is uh there's another one there the the msrp for the base model is um thirty seven thousand five hundred dollars because they wanted it to be under thirty thousand dollars with the federal tax credit of seventy five hundred dollars which expires in june so and then and then that's for the base model this is the base model you can get the fancier one with leather seats and like more safety equipment and other little features and those cost um like 41. I guess one of the big worries people have buying an electric car is how long the battery uh, battery lasts. Uh, I'm worried about that even with my little iPhone. It's kind of the the, the battery weird. capacity. Yeah, how, how is it with the Bolt? Uh, so um, the Bolt has so that was a, a issue with the early with the early model Priuses. Um, and uh, and your iPhone like after a thousand charges. Like after a thousand uh, charge discharge cycles, um, 
uh, that's when you start getting a uh, battery memory loss. It's kind of like a person. Oh, tell me about memory <laughs> loss, please. And, and, um, and it'll actually affect the range, but a thousand charge cycles times 238 miles, that's 238,000 miles. So I actually, uh, using an OBD reader, which you can plug into the OBD port in your car, um, you can actually uh, measure the battery capacity. And the battery capacity of this car after 33,000 miles, I think is about the same as when I bought it. So I don't think I'm gonna start having issues with memory. At least the car won't have issues with memory. <laughs> I can't speak about myself. I don't think the car is gonna have issues with memory until well over 150,000 miles. And by then I'm gonna have, it's gonna be time for a new car anyway. Cause I'm, when you drive a car for ride share, for Uber and Lyft, the, uh, your car starts to smell like drunk people and all kinds of awful things after a while, especially with cloth seats. Well, that's all well and good, but uh, actually what is it like on the, to drive it on the road for you? And oh man, so here's the thing. People think, people equate electric vehicles with, um, with like hybrids, right? Which are, you know, they're designed for maximum fuel economy and efficiency. I know you're a Prius owner, Bob, so I have to pick my words carefully. <laughs> my wife is a Prius owner. Oh, okay, but they're, they're boring. Bob and I are both motorcyclists, so we like going fast. This car hauls ass. It has a, it does a, I think it's rated, or it's been tested at uh, 5.6 or 5.7 second uh, zero to 60 times, which is, is, in the realm of performance cars. So it's really fast. Uh, in fact, it's so, the, it makes so much torque. Like the, the electric motor puts the torque to the road immediately, like the torque peak, right? So even at one or two RPMs, it's delivering maximum power. So if you need to, to you know, get into a hole in traffic or to pass another car, this car really hauls ass. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it spins, and on wet pavement, the tires just spin. Um, and also, it's it's really nimble. It has a short wheelbase. Um, it has I don't know what they call this this kind of design, but here we're doing a really tight U-turn, oh, and this is tight. and we're in the Berkeley Hills where yeah. Bob lives, uh, and the roads are really narrow. Super tight. And this car just makes U-turns like you wouldn't believe. Three point turns like I have never driven a car this size that's so maneuverable and uh, easy to get around in. So it's a really fun experience driving and passengers really like it. They're always impressed by its performance. It's a, it's a fun car. It's you're not you're not giving anything up. In fact, I think you're actually gaining something with an electric car. It's it's not where you have to like sacrifice to get efficiency. You actually get efficiency and you get a more fun driving experience. So I I guess you're happy with it then as a, as a driver. Oh yeah. What do your passengers say? The passengers? If, if yeah, they, they love it. Like it's really roomy. Like Bob, you're not a, you're not a small man. That's, how that's how tall are you? You're six, six, six? Uh, seven and a half. You're, you're six. Two meters. That's exactly. You're, two meters. Bob, Bob's a scientist. So he likes to use the metric system. Uh, yeah, Bob's two meters and he's, he's sitting back Got there. Plenty of like, yeah, and he's sitting back there, and he's he's pretty good. I even put the seat back a little bit, um, so he's he's pretty comfortable back there. And, and also, the doors are wide, and the roof is really high, so it's really easy yeah. to get in and out. There's, of. there's yeah. I have full headroom yeah. even sitting in the back seat. So one nice thing for from a rideshare driver perspective is if it takes less time for passengers to get in and out, you're going to make more money because the faster those passengers are out, especially people that have mobility issues, if it's easier for them to get in and out of the car, um, you're gonna be able to get to your next ride that much faster. Have you so, ever had three in the back seat on a ride? Oh yeah, yeah, you can even get three car seats back there, like for kids, which is uh, which comes up sometimes if you're doing ride share. And uh, the only place it's lacking is luggage. So there's not a lot of room uh, you know, compared to like a big luxury sedan or something, like it doesn't have a, big, a huge trunk, but it's bigger than my last car, so it's it's pretty good. Do uh, can you get special rates from the electric company, or maybe the cost of charging it is so little it doesn't matter? Oh yeah, that that's one of my reader my readers' questions was was that uh, because we also you know please go to the website and read the full article, but. Um, the, uh, but yeah, Barb asked that. Do you know Barb Shore? 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. Bar bask bat. She's, she's always making these funny comments on your Facebook I post. Know. Yeah. I know. I love Barb. Um, but she uh, she asked, how do you get the special rate from the utility company? So PG&E is the local utility, but every utility in California, as far as I know, offers a special rate for electric vehicle charging. What it, what they do is they set you up with a new rate plan, um, and uh, I charge for 12.7 cents per kilowatt hour, which means this I, I think it's like eight bucks to to fully charge the car, and that takes me 250 miles. Like that's like buying gas for 60 cents a gallon. Yeah. So any any other questions, Bob? No, I'm just sitting back here and enjoying the ride. Uh, I wonder what's going to cost me here. Am I am I, did I am I doing this with Uber? Or <laughs> I had to turn off. I had to turn off the Uber app, uh, Bob. So this is actually no charge. Um, but uh, um, if you have, any, but if you the viewer, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them below or send us an email. We release re, we release new videos every single day. Um, or every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. It shows the thumbs up button. There we go. All right, that's all I've got. So I'll see you next time. And remember, uh, don't drive yourself crazy. See you later.